live. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, very happy to be joined by um, the team behind the fantastic Hobeck books, who are going to start us off with an introduction to themselves and their authors, I think, might be the way okay. to start it. Yeah, we'll do that. Sure. Uh, well, I'm Agent Hobart. I'm Rebecca Collins. And together we run Hobeck Books. Inspired. This is becoming a bit, of a bit of a trope, isn't it? Because... Uh, <laughs> We always uh, we always say this. Uh, we um, ran Ho Sally Hobart books a couple of years ago, and uh, we specialise in crime, suspense, mystery, and thrillers. And we have twenty authors now signed to us. We are about to add a twenty-first. We're still working on that, uh, but uh, it's been remarkable, really. We started off with Robert Dawes, mm -hmm. Uncle Bob, as we call him. Uh, who joined us at the, at the very beginning and uh, took a leap of faith with us. And that, and that made all the difference. Because suddenly, um, to other authors, we suddenly look credible. So um, people have come forward. And uh, it's roughly 50-50 split women and men at the moment. Um, and we have just launched our latest book, which is Fair Game by R.D. Nixon or Terry Nixon, uh, who was on your show uh, earlier in the week. And so, um, you know, it's 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 really gratifying that uh, people of her quality and Robert and Malcolm Hollingtray, oh, you name it, yeah. all of them are fantastic we're, we're, authors. We're, we're, we're so grateful. It's such a great to, team. Yeah. You do have some fantastic authors and really good face like Twitter advertising, because I downloaded a book the other day oh, and you're really? advertising. <laughs> oh, may I ask which one it was? <laughs> It was a uh, cozy crime. I'm going to see if my Kindle works, and then I will tell you what the title is. Hey. I'm thinking swindled. I'm thinking swindled. I'm predicting too. swindled. I think you were right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't go yeah. on Twitter very often, so that's by S. C. Shepherd. Yeah. Or Sue Shepherd. Yeah. Um, well, that's 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 really great because yeah, yeah. it really has picked up this this last week for swindled and and i'm reading book two at the moment so you're, you're, and you're, i love it i'm, I'm loving it so. you're, you're the lucky one um <laughs> you know that that's gone through it's in, on its second cover and we just felt that previously our cover didn't reflect necessarily what was within mm. quite as accurately as we might and we've never done that before but it really had well actually that's no, not strictly well, true we, we did we did tweak before, the yeah. robert Dawes. but this covers. is a complete change of cover and you know i love i absolutely love it i want to frame that cover i yeah. love it yeah <laughs> thanks to jane jane map who is she's designed a lot of our book covers hasn't yes she, and she has fantastic job yeah so. and she's really been along the journey the whole way through because she was the signer for robert Dawes's covers and that was her first cover ever and um, you know we've she's sort of evolved alongside us really as we've got better at briefing and understanding what what we think will work for readers and mm. she's got better at designing it and and, and um, more confidence so it's um, yeah I'm, I'm you know glad you picked that one up it's a good fun yeah I think we have a good relationship with Jane don't we because you know we do tell her if we, we think she's she's not quite hitting the mark or you know or it's, it's she hasn't quite understood something in the brief and she's very good about. Saying well, I think the credit goes to her because yeah. she takes uh, direction extremely oh, well, absolutely. even even when it's none of them are good. Get <laughs> to them again, yeah, um, no, which doesn't happen very often. But you know, uh, it doesn't matter what we we throw at her; she, she'll always respond. So, um, and that's that's not easy in this game. It's the same with authors. You know, it's sometimes you have to say things that you don't, uh, you know, are not going to land and be particularly popular. Um, but it's for the benefit of. I mean, ultimately, what we're trying to do is everything should be for the benefit of readers. So we're trying to make everything we do the best it can be from that perspective. Yeah, because, I mean, we make a lot of our decisions based on the fact that we are readers as well, don't we? You know, we're sort of learning um, as we go along, um, not just as ourselves as readers, but we're trying to put ourselves in the shoes of other people who might not be quite like us or might have slightly different taste to us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's difficult. It's difficult to judge. We've got some questions coming. Oh, in. I can't read them because my I, I, I can if I read them slightly. I was uh, just going to tell you. So you've got hellos from Sam, Leslie, and Donna. Hello. We were just Leslie talking about you, Donna. Donna. Yes, uh, we mentioned you and your Hobart. Was it a dishwasher or a cooker? I'm sure it was the other one, wasn't it? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, at work. Uh, I really want a Hobart piece of kitchen equipment at well, some point in my life. maybe your 60th birthday in nine years' yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, and I think Samantha Brownlee's got some questions for us. Quite a few. She does. She wanted to know what made you sign your first book. 
Well, well that's a good story. Yeah, it's a really it? good story because we almost didn't. And um, so Robert Dawes came to us and said, I want to work with you guys. And let's bear in mind that when he approached us, all we had really was uh, the first starting of our website. We had a logo. And business cards. And business cards. That's all we had. And, and a tagline, you know, um, trad values, indie spirit. And that was it. And uh, I'd stood in for him on a podcast with Adam Croft at Morecambe and Vice um, Crime Festival. And, you know, you had heard it and liked the cut of our jib and, and, and came to us. Um, and then we said to him, look, you're Robert Dawes. Yeah, we you're did actually big say. News. We said, are you sure you want to well, publish try, with us? I phoned him three <laughs> times to try and persuade him that we weren't ready to take him on. Um, but you can't argue with man of his pedigree and it, it really has paid off so part of it was we liked the books anyway um but we didn't think we were worthy if we're honest yeah imposter syndrome i think yeah, everybody has big that time, don't they? big so. time imposter syndrome we really didn't think we were we were ready to to take that on uh and work with somebody of his his sort of knowledge and caliber but he persuaded us that he understood that we were a startup and that we were finding a way through it. And, and he want, he was thought it'd be fun to go on that journey. And it mm -hmm. has been. It's been wonderful, isn't it? So and that's why we call him Uncle Bob, because he is. He's our yeah, Uncle Bob. he is really. I mean, he's only a little bit older than us, but, um, you yeah, know, he acts like Uncle Bob, doesn't he? I mean, yeah, he does. Like, oh, my dear old thing and all that sort of thing. Very actor, you know, sort of Lee. Um, but we won't regret that decision ever because no. it was it, it made all the difference uh, and accelerated the whole process of setting up Hobeck. Mm. So um, we, we thank him for that and for his faith in us. We're just waiting for book four, Uncle Bob. <laughs> <laughs> if, he's not, if he's listening or watching. He, um, he's a group member. So oh, right, we're in trouble now. <laughs> he's a very busy man, though. He's, very he's busy. extremely yeah. busy. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that impresses me the most about Hobeck is that you, for sort of starting off and being quite still quite small, even with 20 authors, you sort of getting the books out there. So they've, I've read ones that have been on the Bloody Scotland debut list and things mm -hmm. like that. How are you getting sort of in contact with all of those? Because I, I, I love that sort of Bloody Scotland for a start, take on sort of books from smaller publishers and authors. Yeah, yeah, they are very good about doing that. Yeah, they? they've been they've been um, tremendous to, to to sort of interact with and 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 work with really because uh, Bob McDevitt, the festival director up there, uh, has been on the show on the Hopcast and um, really just gets the spirit of it because a lot of the other festivals, let's be honest, are a little snootier. I mean, Crime Fest, to be fair, there are so many panels that a lot of our new authors, the first time authors are going to be on panels this year, which is really exciting um, for them. But, you know, Harrogate, it's a different ball game. I mean, they can take the cream and the, the biggest publishers are all vying for the opportunities to get their authors up on, on stage. And it's very hard to 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 get a sort of foot in there, really. Um, we'll be going, I'm sure, again uh, this autumn. But we would love to see a fringe festival where the <laughs> indies get a chance to put themselves forward. That would be, I think that's the next step for Harrogate. If I'm honest, that's the challenge I would set them is, you know, if you really want to open it up, um, I'm sure I'm, you know, and they've got a lot to organize, but put, give us a marquee somewhere that we can put on fringe events. <laughs> be about uh, a little teepee. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, they do have, I mean, they didn't have that, that marquee, that extra marquee, uh, last time where we saw Ian Rankin speaking and, um, just just let us in there let you know it mm. doesn't have to be too many events it could be a couple of day but that would make such a difference to the indies um who turn up and you know buy the tickets and are there in amongst the crowd uh you know buying the drinks so why not um we you know we've, we've we want a presence there really well i think another thing to say about sort of how we got into bloody scotland is um i think we both feel quite uh strongly that it is important to enter our authors for prizes when we can mm. and there are, there are a lot of prizes out there, uh, all sorts of things, you know, that yeah. they qualify for. There's some for sort of a certain age, for debut authors, yeah. for... And, and the bloody Scotland one, um, you know, we just thought, we'll give it a go. And we got lucky with Mark Whiteman, didn't we? And then we sort of built the relationship. Well, it, 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 it richly deserved its nomination. And anyone who's read Waking the Tiger by Mark Whiteman just knows how what a great book it is. Just yeah, it really is, yeah. It's you know it's a remarkably strong debut, and um, 
you know, we're we're desperate to get our hands on book two. We're waiting <laughs> waiting on that. Um, but what's been really interesting about that is that it's really taken off in the United States um, in, in recent months. It's it's resonating over there in, in a way that is, it, I think that's quality fiction for you, really. Um, you know, it'll work anywhere. But uh, it, with its international setting set in Singapore, I think it's, it's, it's picking up a, an audience there. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we believe we're picking up authors who deserve to rub shoulders with the, the big names and to win prizes alongside them as well. So, you know, long may that continue. I think Donna is saying that it's a dishwasher, a Hobart dishwasher. Oh, Hobart dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, well, we need to replace our house, so we'll put a Hobart one instead. <laughs> she's, she's also saying that she agrees about the Indies getting a bigger representation at big festivals. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. I mean, you know, I think that, I think there's a whole community of, of people, not just the indie publishers or the indie authors, but let's be honest, the indie fans. Because many of the people joining this discussion tonight and watching us tonight and, and interacting with us are those people who have given the non-traditionally published authors a chance and uh, a platform. So um, they deserve a bit more sort of credit as well. I think I always feel that, uh, you know, we're going to make more of an effort, I think, now that we've done one Harrogate. Um, and we've spoken to quite a number of the authors who sort of star at these events. And know. we were quite shy. We, we were very shy. I don't think we're <laughs> going to be as shy this time. But I would, I would love it to be just that. I know you can walk up to an author and get their autograph and have a little chat. Um, but it still takes a little bit of courage to do that. You know, to it took walk, me an awful lot of courage to, to give um, Richard Osman yeah. a bug. <laughs> and I still haven't had the courage at all the festivals that I've been to where Val mcdermott has been there to actually speak to us. I know. So, um, I, don't, I think change. she really is such a great. We we, we sort of see her and she's got a bit of a force field around her. It's not her, it's us that yeah, <laughs> feel yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we will. We will pluck up the courage to talk to her next time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I missed out on Harrogate last year because um, I got pinged by work. Oh, no. To self-isolate. Um, but hopefully this year, me and Sam had big plans to go together. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, you know, we'd buy a drink when, when you're there. Um, it's no, oh, hello, Terry. Nice oh, to Terry. Good, even, good evening, Terry. We swapped, uh, swapped them over this time, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we were on the other side. Honestly. Well, um, if you've got a 12 year old handy to ask us questions <laughs> like we did to you, then, then feel free. I would um, ask you the questions that the kids at my school would ask, but you really don't want those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sam has asked, are your submissions open at the moment? Uh, mm, no. Unfortunately not. No, and, and I can, we've got a confession that we're still working through our ones from September. Um, I don't think we've really uh, just sort of... Um, I, th I think we didn't calculate just how much time it takes to do it properly. And with just the two of us running the business uh, and doing everything else, I mean, I'm in the middle of proofing our next, one of our next novels uh, from Jonathan Peace. And uh, that's a time consuming business as well as narrating an audio book or two and running the adverts on a Amazon and, and all that stuff. Um, it's been really, really difficult. And so we've really sort of decided that with 20 authors anyway, and maybe one or two others from that submissions pile joining mm. us, um, we're probably not going to open for some time now because we owe it to the people that we've got to give them our full attention. And uh, it's really, really difficult. What, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a complete change from how we imagined it would be because when we first started, we were going to festivals trying to find authors. We actually produced a leaflet that yeah. says, are you a writer? Are you looking for a publisher? <laughs> and um, and now it, it's completely the opposite. So we're really sorry about not having the window open um, for the foreseeable future. Um, and, you know, I still have about 10 people to get back to already mm. with 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 the the, the, I mean, the, the pile of manuscripts there is there's at. one i'm waiting to read and i'm dying to read it but i'm reading the second book of one of our existing authors first and so there's this one i just think oh i want to start it but i just haven't had time yet no there isn't enough time <laughs> so, of the day so uh, that's why we're 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 closed at present i'm afraid but you know keep keep your eyes peeled i mean you know that might change in the autumn but um not for now anyway yeah Fair enough. Sam has also asked if readers and bloggers can apply to be ARC readers. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, we, 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 I, we've got quite a lot of sort of readers and bloggers, but I always say to them, you don't have to read everything. And I give them the, the, the chance to, to read, you know, and I say, 
what do you think of this book? If it appeals to you, let me know. If you've got time as well, because I know that readers and bloggers, they've all got a big TBR pile, haven't they? So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I quite like that because we get different voices for different books, you know. So I like having a mix. So I'm always open. To yeah, I mean, we're all, we're always keen to, I mean, you know, especially, you know, so, some of the people that have joined recently have just given us such fantastically detailed feedback, which really helps you know, iron out some of the creases that even just before we're publishing, mm. you never know, something turns up that that you need to to, to address. So um, the more the merrier, really. I mean, you know, we call it the Hobeck family and we regard all of our advanced readers as, as, as being part of that. And in, in the future, hopefully we can make it even more sort of uh, a rewarding relationship rather than you know the here's, an, here's a book get yeah, on with it i just and also I, I love exchanging emails with, <laughs> yeah, sure. with them because you know they talk about what they're doing their cats their jobs um other books yeah. they've read and you know they tell them what the cats are doing and it's almost <laughs> like it's almost like we need to make it a minimum requirement that the person likes joining cats. Likes cats yeah has a cat <laughs> <I mean. laughs> but yeah so there are so many comments coming up. I'm just I'm going down in order so I don't miss anything. So the next question yeah. was Sam again. So she said, "How was it starting Hobeck during a pandemic? Have you managed to meet all of your authors in person yet?" No. Well, I mean, one part of that answer to that question is we don't know. We don't know any different. We we've only yeah. operated in a pandemic, so. I'd like to know what it's like to operate in under completely normal well, circumstances. I, I, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, when we first that first lockdown hit and then it slightly lifted didn't it and we could go to the cafes again and there was a eat, you know eat out to help out and all that stuff we we did that with you know liberal abandon we were always having coffees <laughs> and reading manuscripts and all that sort of thing we've kind of settled into a rhythm where we never go out now um you know it's the two of us across the kitchen table with our laptops and um uh so yeah i mean we've kind of been in a sort of semi-lockdown i mean i do need you know about you i mean you go and take the kids to school and back every day but i i've always needed the option to go off and do something else for a bit um to keep my mental health together and so there were times during that period uh when we were really locked down uh where i felt that struggle um really terrible actually mm. and the other thing is you know we've we recently we moved a year ago but we haven't really laid down roots where we are now so in terms of um having people to sort of you know have a natter with we don't really have just each that. other yeah we have each other so we, <laughs> that's something that's really taken i mean it's been remarkable really given that we spend best part of 24 hours a day with each other sorry my son's now ringing i'll just uh hit the button and kill that um it, you know, i haven't killed him yet no it's amazing and that would make a good crime book yeah and i think the other thing is that with the pandemic i mean we don't know whether our sales pre-pandemic would have been stronger than I've got absolutely were, no, no we idea. have no data to work with i know anecdotally a lot of a lot of ebooks were sold and, and things like that but some some authors really struggled some publishers mm. went to the wall during the pandemic um particularly those who had bricks and mortar stores you know um take getting their books into those once those shut it was a real problem but the other the other thing that's happened is that the pandemic has persuaded the big publishers they've got to get online and advertise online and that has changed the dynamic of the whole business so it the competition is is much tougher than it was two years ago say but as to have we met all our authors well yeah. we seem to be quite good at recruiting authors who live by the sea <laughs> and live in different countries uh we've got one in new zealand lewis hastings so we haven't met him yet um we're probably also he's we've a probably man. met face to face just around the 50 percent mark um we'll have a chance to meet one or two more at, at crime fest who you know we we mm. haven't um seen in person and um you know at some point when we get some time without kids we'll do a proper road trip and get around to everybody else that's a lot of miles it is a lot of miles because <laughs> a, couple, a couple in scotland uh we've met mark whiteman but we haven't uh, met harry properly no, Har harry is harry a Fisher. Long way. uh and then there's the one uh flying the ointment which is one is in new zealand yeah like and I that's said, gonna Lewis. be um but yeah. apparently Lewis is going to visit the UK, so we might get the chance. But we do regularly um, meet them on on Zoom and yeah. Skype, don't we? So yeah, it's pretty. We know pretty what they regular. look like. <laughs> yeah, it's regular chats. Yeah. So you can pick them out of a lineup. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think so. Yeah, I'd be I'd be horrified if I didn't recognise one of them when I bumped into them. Um, yeah, God help us. If, if you walk around Tesco and you walk past Ali Morgan, you... I think that, I think that would be yeah. That I think. 
Brian I might pass. I mean, you know, he, he would he would blend in <laughs> nicely, but Ali you would not not miss. Okay. Let's be honest. <laughs> so uh, Terry said hi. Oh, you noticed that though, didn't you? Mary yes, Chris, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Thomas said hi from a wild and windy Scotland. Tell us your idea. Hi, Mary. Hi. So what's your ideal author pitch and what makes your heart sing in a pitch email? Oh, no, I like that question. Your mm -hmm. ideal author pitch. Yeah, we've had all sorts. We've had we've had some <laughs> we've had ones written in crayon. Um that wasn't so successful. Uh yeah, that's really the I mean the the key thing is that you know we we've got certain submission criteria that, that we write out. So we want a synopsis, we want a covering letter, and we want the first three chapters. Yeah. And anything any variation from that is a no-no really for us. Yeah, if they it's haven't read the website, bell. they haven't read the submission guidelines, then I think, well. So, that, so that's a start. <laughs> that's so, not a good sign. A synopsis, um, yeah, keep it to a page. Really keep it to the to the the key story, really. I mean, sometimes you get them where they're just, you know, sometimes it's two or three pages and it goes on and on and introduces dozens of characters. Um, a real, I mean, I'm sort of finding find the ones which which find fault. It's it's interesting if you read the cover letter and it's beautiful, you know, it's really well written research and they understand, listen to the podcast, all that sort of thing. You're thinking, right, we're on a winner here. They've already done the research. I do quite like it are. if it's there's a personal element. Yeah. So they, they say, oh, I heard your podcast and you interviewed so and so, and I thought that was really interesting. You know, anything that starts, dear sirs, you know, I mean, come on, you know, <laughs> we're not hiding our identity. Um, <laughs> So that doesn't help. Uh, oh, if it's obviously copied and pasted and sent to every single publisher they've submitted to, mm. I, that that does make me think. Well, it doesn't take much effort to tweak it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, key info. I mean, you know, a really good pitch, um, Mary, will be one where they talk about uh, some of the influences that have, uh, you know, the sort of the comparison authors, because that's a very important consideration in terms of the marketing. So that, you know, it immediately puts us into. Uh, the frame of mind of you know the commercial side of it so that you know we want our authors to think about like that a little bit because that's an important consideration i think also somebody who you know says look very clearly this is such and such genre uh or you know uh i'm this is this type of story it's x number of words long and here's the synopsis and i do like a synopsis with the character names in bold because oh, i don't i do well, because, we differ there. because it makes it you know because i just need that well, for me, it, 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 it disrupts the flow of your reading. But that's why we're different. So in a way, what we're saying is that, I don't know. It wouldn't put me off, though. It wouldn't stop me. No. No, it's just a person. And then that first three chapters, well, I mean, it's a good judge whether, you know, the, the story is obvious from the start. Uh, but what we're really looking for is the quality of the writing. So we're we're suckers for good first lines oh totally yeah I mean, brian price if you're watching you you had the best first line that i've read in a long time so yeah, yeah and that yeah, worked yeah. on us we loved it and yeah, and we also we, we we go yeah. very much on gut feeling don't we both of us you know we mm. sort of start reading it i tend to either when we're, when we're traveling or i take myself away and just sit and i usually think fairly quickly not even at the end of the first chapter i think yeah, I like this one. I want to read the rest. Yes. I mean, once once or twice, you you, you know, you get the full manuscripts in and you realise the first two, three chapters were really well polished and the rest of it falls apart after that. Mm. But um, that's pretty rare. Yeah. You know, normally you, you a good judge. Um, and the other thing I would say is on a, on a don't do, don't italicise a whole prologue or something like that. Please don't do that. Um, you know, even if it's different from the rest of, you know, point of view is different from the rest of the novel. It just... It's so hard to read if it's all italicized, um, I find. You know, but when we use it sparingly. When we're reading submissions, we tend to read them separately from each other yeah. and we try not to influence the other person. But I've got this bad habit of uh, <laughs> yeah. I seek him out in the house and I say, Can you can you read this one? I already know she <laughs> likes it if she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, she, if I you, dance around the kitchen and then I can't go, stop talking about how much I love it, then yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> giving yeah, it away it, a little not, bit. Not not you're trying to influence me in any way. <laughs> Do you ever we have agree though? No, we haven't yet. No, um, I think I think there have been times where it's been uh, we've got different levels of passion for the book. Mm. Um, now, I mean, I, I, I you know, I've read 
so i mean you know there are certain books i mean i won't name them where it's been a i've really pushed for this one and bex has gone yeah okay i i see where you're coming from and it'll be the other way around and Absolutely, i think yeah. the different books appeal to us and um you know i'm a sucker for a good international thriller we don't have that many on our on our books but you know we've got got obviously uh i mean ollie jarvis is a very good example of that and obviously lewis hastings mm. and we're hoping to sign um another um, author in that sort of sphere part police procedural very very small part sort of police procedural but then it gets really big um quite quickly um but that that's that's for a future announcement and i i'm a, i hate to sound like a girl but i'm a sucker for anything that gets me emotionally and you yeah know. you love psychological fiction i do and, and yeah and domestic so, but, noir but because and, we are an emotional element yeah because we have different tastes i do i trust your judgment so hmm. And, and you, likewise. Well, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I think that early on, early doors when we signed Anthony Dunford, I was absolutely hooked because, you know, I have read quite a few sort of militarist, you know, uh, thrillers with a military twist, you know, characters in handle a weapon and sort things out with their skills and stealth, you know, like a female Jack Reacher, I suppose you, you would say with, um, with uh, Jane Harbour. Not quite so tall then. Uh, no, not quite so tall, but, but, <laughs> You know, I know that's Lee Charles' a big influence on on Anthony's writing, and I loved that stuff. And then I think you know, for you, it was oh, it was it was you don't like you don't like you go, we watch a movie, you don't like the, the I don't like the fighty bits. bits, no. But with Anthony, it's a good example of the quality of the writing. Yeah, was you know, I knew yeah. I remember sitting. I remember where I was when I read his submission. I was sitting on the bed in the middle of the pandemic, middle of lockdown, and I thought, this guy can write. So yeah. <laughs> And so we've got a little bit of the other questions answered. So Mary had asked how far into a manuscript you make up your mind. I think you kind of covered that in the other answer. Uh, Terry has wondered if you'd ever consider taking on a freelance editor slash reader. Yeah, um, quite possibly. I mean, you know, it might that might very well help. I think that, uh, yeah, that would... The, the future submissions process, we might have to do that because mm. but I think finding... The key thing is finding somebody who understands the way that Rebecca and I think. Um, which <laughs> I don't think such a person exists. No, no one. No, or, you know, in the sense that, I, you know, you wouldn't expect it out of the box. But it was the same when I was running a, a, a journalism department at the BBC, you know, that people eventually get used to what you think. You know, they come to you pitching things that you will interest you individually. And, and uh, I always try to be sort of broad minded. But... Um, they knew which buttons to press. And I suppose that's what, you, you know, any freelance reader, string mm. editor coming in would would do. But I think don't think we're at the position with the business where we could do that yet. Um, I mean, clearly, you know, we're, we're aiming to be one of those companies where we need extra bodies um, working for us, um, taking over different aspects of the business. Um, but we're not at that stage yet. I mean, mm. we'll be soon. But but, in, the, in the future, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Nice. I've seen uh, a couple of comments rolling in as you were saying this. Uh, um, mm. Leslie, uh, no, Ter Terry said she wasn't angling for a job, by the way. <laughs> 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 but Terry, you'd be brilliant, so. Yeah, you would, you would, yeah. <laughs> and Leslie said, Sam is your woman. All right. Oh, okay, okay. Excellent. I made make a note of that. <laughs> And then just, I'm mixing between my phone and this because I can see who said it when it says Facebook user. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just because it's nicer if you know who's asked a question, isn't it? Yeah, I'm uh, yeah. Leslie has said that she's done her first audio ARC for Hobeck, which she really You liked. have, Leslie. Yes, I saw it. And so thank you so much for doing that. No, it was lovely to have an audio review. Yeah. You are actually our first audio, official audio advanced. Listener. I need that. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the thing with audio, um, you know, the, there are many, many aspects to it. I mean, it's, it's such a laborious process. Um, it always, I always say to myself, right, I'll get into, straight into the next one, but I always need time to recover after I finish one. And, um, you know, because it's just such a painstaking process, the whole performance part of it, and then the editing side of it, and then the mastering and all that malarkey. Something will always creep through, like like in a, a manuscript, you know, you could proofread it six or seven mm. times, and something will slip through. And it's the same with audio, I'm afraid. So anyone who could pick out, you know, the bits where I uh, go, 
you know, something say something rude to a cat. Then... <laughs> Normally, yeah. So before we and had the pick booth, up again. yeah. So he used to have to edit out the "go away, cat" yeah. <laughs> comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was it was tougher. I mean, you know. It, it, but uh, I've just to say, I've, I've just started um, narrating Sin by Malcolm Hollingjay. In fact, it's a second attempt because I, I, I have just changed some of my studio equipment and suddenly the, the sound is so different, I can't possibly use the stuff I'd recorded earlier. So I'm back to back to the beginning, but it makes a big difference. Um, but I'm just thinking, you know, here we go again, you know, deep <laughs> breath. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big marathon. Um, but uh, we're really proud of what we've got. We've got, I think... Uh, nine or ten nine? Yeah. yeah tenth about, no it's ten i think it's ten now yeah because i so you know it's it's great to bring those to audio there's so many obviously in the backlist to, mm. to do too um but you know we feel it's a very important part of the uh, of the, of the portfolio of stuff we do yeah that really is it's great that you've got so many that are out um uh, yeah. Maria said that she loved your recent podcast looking at Agatha Christie's letters. <laughs> we did um, think about you, Mary, when we went to. Yeah, Exeter. we did. We did. We thought Mary's gonna would have loved to be here. Yeah. <laughs> did you go down and go to Greenway as well? We wanted we to. Well, we did. We yeah, it was on our agenda. Then we, I then I looked at the the level of difficulty with the parking arrangements and thought better of it because we'd had we'd had a night but night before. And I wanted um, to paddle in the sea. So we did. We 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 we, we chickened out, but that's one for the you know because we regularly go down that way anyway. But um, yeah, we will get there, won't we? But. Yeah, I mean, in in itself, when, once we've done the interview with um, Annie Price, who currently curates that collection of of, of correspondence, um, we felt there was enough there, really. Mm. And I know we were going to talk about going to Greenway, but we'll, we'll do that for another. Yeah, podcast, what maybe. an amazing. Um, we might yeah. find someone there we can interview. So, uh, sure, I think mm. that's another thing. You know, you really need to uh, approach the National Trust with some trepidation because mm. I mean, I'm when I was um, when I was a sort of broadcast reporter going out and around. I used to go to National Trust properties in the south of England all the time to do stories, and they were so so difficult to to deal with because they, they you know there were certain things that you know you can't see that and you can't talk about this and you, you know this they, they set down a very strict list of things they're very very protective of their image um which is unfortunate occasionally you get a gem of a curator at a particular big house and they would just let you do whatever you wanted and i remember uh once i went to petworth house which is in west sussex and it was one of the places where uh turner um had a studio um jmw turner yeah that's you know. a right and and <laughs> this this studio is an amazing light it's got this sort of bluish gray light and uh the floorboards are all rotten um and so no one's allowed in normally but i managed to persuade them to let me into this room which was the most evocative room i've ever been in it was incredible to think that you'd been there and you could see this flecks of paint on the floor and all and you knew that oh was wow i'm paint. very envious yeah yeah it was amazing and occasionally they'll, they'll do that but most of the time you, you have to be you know. it's, it is difficult because I, I did um, a lot of work at paris castle i had an art exhibition and they also let me into some of the rooms that aren't open to the public and it was a fantastic opportunity but yeah I think we've gone off piece of it. Oh, we always do. <laughs> uh, Greenway is pretty nice. I think I went for a wedding and they let us, while they were sorting stuff out, they let us just go on an impromptu tour. Fantastic. Which yeah. Nice. I mean, it's I mean, it's obviously a very special place for her and, you know, it's it's still full of family heirlooms and, and you know, the the stuff you know from her friends and stuff like that but so i have a i have a book related story about powers castle so yeah, yeah. powers castle which is in uh wales on the edge of wales they have a, a library and it takes them a year to clean the library books so it's mm -hmm. basically all year round and they start one end and they clean all the books until they get to the other the other end and then they start again and they once found a rasher of bacon in one of the books and they don't <laughs> know how old the bacon was wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent i like that someone just marked it with a bit of bacon uh hey, why not you need a bookmark <laughs> the other half of mary's question was that was is there any other hopcast plans you can hint at uh well one or two i mean um we've got uh a number of, of sort of big names lined up um 
which well there's a certain big name lady who's promised us a hobcast and we we haven't quite organized it yet, have we yeah but i mean you know the fact that um she's just had a second child probably isn't helping well um, i think second child is coming in. no i mean we, we're gonna i mean t t t there's two sort of sets of specials coming up so uh we're gonna do uh from london book fair we're gonna do something every day so there'll be a hobcast from the london book fair every day and that'll be a mix of authors and sort of industry figures uh we're just going to busk it as yeah we, we don't there. we don't know who we're just going to see you know, who put it together to um i mean ideally i'll be able to get all my sort of fancy equipment in and we'll be able to sort of sit, sit down with four people around a microphone but i, I think that's probably unlikely we'll, we'll probably just grab use, them use as these go. jobs uh but maybe <laughs> we'll do something a bit more sort of um formal at uh crime fest mm. in in may so we're going again there and they've uh been very kind to uh, you know give us some support so We'd love to get as many of the great authors there, you know, around the microphones as possible and really bring a flavor again every day of the festival, um, sort of, uh, you know, a special hobcast which really reflects what's been going on. So, um, yeah, you know, that's 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 what we're, we're, we're principally planning. But we'll, we'll continue to have the mix of, of authors, both our own and, um, and you know, people new to the, the scene and, and obviously the big names we're aiming to get. Um, and we'll still get to get, you know, experts in different aspects of publishing to talk to us because there's so many different aspects, um, uh, that we still haven't reflected. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's, there's an agent who, um, has said he'll come on the podcast and we've got to organize that at some point, cause that'll be an interesting perspective to look mm, at. Mm. So yeah, it's a changing dynamic there where the agents, um, you know, reading in the, in the uh, bookseller that a lot of editors at, at book publishers who are fed up with the hours they have to keep have become agents yes um, yeah i've so, seen that as well yeah. yeah well uh sam has asked if there's any crime subjects or off limits to you um, oh don't kill cats or dogs yeah we're not keen on on the deaths of animals um <laughs> and you know it's not it's because you know the the the, the um the the sort of down draft of, of of anything like that it really upsets people i mean we kill people we've killed well we did a count didn't we well, Over 100 I mean, people they, last year yeah and, and animals do get killed in our books but it depends on context i think mm -hmm. um so, domestic domestic animals seem to be a real but problem. A cute fluffy kitten please don't kill yeah i mean i i, I hate to say it. i mean there was a, there was one submission where it was a story about somebody who was psychologically damaged by being in afghanistan who was going around slaughtering cats and that was you know essentially we didn't feel we could publish that um but uh i think we haven't found a subject yet that we felt uncomfortable no. publishing but we are always aware and this is you know we're entering into difficult territory there's a lot of subjects which suddenly um you can discuss a year ago and you can't discuss now so you have i mean you know we don't have a sensitivity reader uh, or employ anybody like that, like so many other publishers are doing at the moment, because we don't want to censor our authors, um, uh, you know, unnecessarily. But we are very conscious that uh, society is changing so quickly and attitudes to certain things um, and aspects of life that, you know, we, we could find ourselves in trouble inadvertently very quickly and we have we have had occasions haven't we where there's something in a manuscript yeah. and we think or we say to the author you know you might want to have a think about what you're saying here and you might want to adjust it slightly and would you would this character really think like this mm -hmm. and you might have people who might not like that so little instances but it's not to do with um our personal no sort of level threshold of of ickiness or anything like that it's no and <laughs> I, I mean it's it's difficult isn't it i mean um politically we've had one or two sort of politically driven novels i suppose the one thing that we we, we tend to get a bit wary wary of is a, a book that supposedly is a crime book but it's really a polemic about some aspect of society and it's sort of very sort of you know it's, mm. it's more like a rant than it is a story and we won't publish no we have yeah and we have we, we have pushed back on those yeah, yeah. Uh, Leslie has said that you're really local to her. Oh, no, are we? When she looks at the website. Oh, where, 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 where is she? <laughs> Can we share this information? <laughs> oh, yeah, you, Leslie, send us a message if you want. <laughs> yeah, give, give us an indication of the first part of your postcode. Then we'll, 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 
<laughs> no, I can't. Uh, Karen McKinley said hello. She said it's lovely to see you both. Hi. Uh, Maria said she's just finished reading A.B. Morgan's first book. That was another one that I was looking at getting. Um, I need to stop there. I've got too many books to read at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be hooked by the uh, by that whole series. And, yeah, you we know, love the quirks. The quirks and book three is not that far away. No, I've read book three. I'm very lucky. Um, and they also have their own Twitter account, the quirks. So. Yes, they do. And they're quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I excellent. love it when you get like a picture. I've just followed, I've been watching, because I'm a massive nerd, I've been watching an anime, and um, the characters in it have an Instagram account, which I now follow. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it, it, we'll, we'll try anything. Um, I mean, you know, it was a natural fit because. Oh, because, uh, yeah, yeah, Ali brings them so much to life. Yeah. And we said to her, we said, well, they should have their own Twitter account, surely. You know, they are mm -hmm. real in our minds. So. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, no, well, thank you, Mary. Um, yeah, I mean, we check out the audiobooks as well because uh, Ali has done a great job um, on on the first one. And between us, we're, I mean, I've, I've been very slow on the edit of throttles uh, on the audio, but we'll get there. Mm. Um, and she's also narrated Swindled, hasn't she? Which yeah, we mentioned earlier. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, and she's just a natural, mm. just a you know brilliant narrator. Get them together, and they just they just mimic, do all these mimicky oh, things. It's, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Leslie said she's with you, Rebecca, on liking the emotional content and psychological aspects. Yeah, that's definitely um, me. Yeah, if it gets, if it makes my heart go. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there's an interesting thing here because um, I hope Lewis doesn't mind us mentioning this, but one of the things we fed back on the chemist was that we wanted the relationship between uh, the main character Jack Cade and um, Carrie, who has been, you know, his his um, love interest or partner for the last. Five, well, for the, all the five books, really, or mm. you know, certainly developed over the the five books, um, we really wanted them to go through emotional hell because sometimes you know you think uh, you, you just got to throw your characters into into harm's way. If it's not going to be physical harm, then make them really feel something and, mm. and battle against you know their past or something like that. And um, so you know, with that story, it had all of the elements you want in a thriller but what it now has is an emotional core that really makes it compelling for every reader i think mm. um you know quite apart from the uh from the you know the gun the chasing the fighty the, bits as fight, i call the them. fighty bits the, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah the international level of malevolence that's uh, within that book uh leslie said she's just outside newport wow no. that is, that really is close. close oh well that's <laughs> for coffee all right <laughs> <laughs> round, round to yours then uh, leslie next i wonder week. where she is i'm intrigued well we'll we'll we'll, we'll take this offline but we'll come I'm in newport every day <laughs> fantastic well that's great we'll see you waitrose um, <laughs> maybe we've walked past her in waitrose and never knew very likely very likely yeah. So you're also quite good at tweeting. So I know you do a lot of like ones just about Hobeck, but you do tweet sort of other things that you're reading. And while we're yeah, here, while you're me. here, <laughs> yeah, that's, while that's you're right. here, what are your top reads so far of the year? Oh, top reads of the year. Now I've got to try and remember what I've read since Christmas. I haven't actually read much since Christmas, which is a bit of a shame. But at the end of last year, if I'm allowed to have that one, Shuggy Bain by, uh, I've forgotten the name of the author, but it was a Booker Prize winner. Douglas, and I, I picked uh, it up in a charity shop, hard back in a charity shop for a pound. I thought, I'll give it a go. I, it's just one of the best books of the decade. Mm. And it's not a crime novel, unfortunately, but um, in terms of crime, We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. Yeah, I think, I think, I think you know, um, we, <laughs> I said to you the other day, I mean, I've read my first non Hobeck book in months the other day uh which is a, a book that came out last year uh robert harris's v2 which is you know all over the supermarket shelves at the moment um and i've always liked his books but um this one fell down not not historically i think he's always really good on the history stuff about you know the world war ii and stuff but just fell down as a as a plot i mean you know nothing really happens um, you know, your, your main characters are in the m minimalist level of danger at the very end, and that's quickly f sorted out by the intervention of, you know, their 
senior bosses. Um, so for me, that was a disappointment. I was really into it to start with. Beautiful writing as usual. Um, but yeah, I was disappointed. So we're yeah we're a bit behind the curve in terms of reading other stuff at the you moment. should see my pile by the bed oh, it's ridiculous i mean the pile is so big that cat yeah. uses it to scratch your chin against and it's one day it's going to all come toppling and, and get me in the night <laughs> <laughs> but i mean the interesting thing about reading for pleasure is i i don't know about you but i find i'm so much more uh critical in in a positive way i'm more critical of other people's plots and their dialogue and their the, you know the, the mm. writing style than I used to be because I can't switch off from having from yeah that. There, there is an element of that I mean I'm reading <laughs> I'm reading for the purposes of trying to be a writer so for me that's more important you know I'm trying to sort of get that thing of it sort of seeps into you and you know reflects in your own writing when you see someone really gifted um whatever aspect of writing it might be mm. I'm hearing what you said about TVR files and looking at mine at the side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> like they were long here as well and then the bookshelves <laughs> thinking it, it's bonkers and i still keep buying books i just can't help it mm. no i do the same i bought a book today <laughs> <laughs> and i've only been to work <laughs> <laughs> karen wants to know if you'd consider publishing different genres in the future um it's interesting that we've we get we get some submissions that are away from our main ones. We've had uh, one or two non-fiction projects come our way, um, which we were very close to thinking about doing, but, mm. you know, realistically, we've still got to, uh, you know, I think any further sort of dilution of the, what we're doing, it, it's not right for us at the moment. Um, although they were really well written books. Um, and, and indeed I've sort of, been dabbling with a with an well we're doing our own non-fiction book actually uh at the moment between us so we're writing a daily diary um of our lives of running hoback for the year so we started on january the first it'll be published as soon as we can in 2022 mm. probably won't take us very long to get it get it we'll done proofread each other's entries yeah we? we'll, we'll, we'll basically <laughs> get it proofread and, and copy edited every three months or something we'll, yeah. we'll probably do it that way yeah um which has really been fascinating because, you know, you can look back and see where the challenges were on a given day that you forget. It just gets forgotten. And I feel it? like Adrian Hall now. Mm. You know, <laughs> some some days you sit there and you think, well, what are we going to talk about? But there's always something. Oh, I, I just sit there sometimes and I, I'm poised in my fingers thinking I've got to do the diary and it just flows out my fingers. Mm. It's magic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in terms of other genres, I mean, I would love to be a romance writer, truthfully. I really would. Um, and try not to be... Sort of tongue-in-cheek about it um i suppose that my the book i'm writing at the moment is it, it's structured as a romance i mean i wanted to find one of the genres to sort of fit it around but it's really a mystery um a suspense novel with a with a core romantic story at the at the, at the heart of it and i'm sort of i'm not going to give anything away but a really heartbreaking um finale i would um, love to write a romance novel as well yeah but day. i think it's I think it's, uh, you know, I've, I've been offered for narration purposes. I've done, I've narrated one romance story, which was set, <laughs> it, was a, it was a military romance. Mm. So, you know, butch, hunky, SAS guy rescues um, <laughs> uh, adventurous woman from tar Taliban caves in Afghanistan. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was an interesting project. But I've been offered quite a number of romance things because my voice is sort of what they people lot, think he sounds romantic well it's a lot of a lot of american <laughs> authoresses um think that i'm the sort of voice that they want for their so, so. regency romance you know on petticoats and all that stuff you know <laughs> bridgerton with more knobs on um so to speak uh and honestly i've picked up these scripts and i can't do it I just I can't read those. I mean, that one or two of them have been so badly written. Um, so, uh, and uh, famously, one of the very first projects I was uh, approached to do was um, an erotica involving leprechauns set in Texas. Uh, so that was. Uh, that I was think a, you need to find that if that book is published. I'm but, sure it has been, but I, but I, I wasn't. Excellent. <laughs> 
I am. Um, I do like a romance. Um, Kelly Quayton in our group wrote a really good kind of Regency story that is kind of romantic but has crime in it. Mm. It was I quite like brilliant. yeah, the blend of romance and crime. Because mm. I mean, you know, what does love do? It causes people to fight and yeah, kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep nagging her for book two. <laughs> you need to write book two. <laughs> Every time she's on from a panel, it's like the only question I ask her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> When's book two coming out? Uh, someone has asked where we could find your podcasts. So if someone wants to go back and listen to them, yeah. you've intrigued them. Sure. So the Hobcast book show uh, is available on almost all of the major podcast podcast platform so particularly you know uh apple and uh spotify and amazon music um there's about i think about 13 different outlets where it's available yes yeah, so uh, it's also do we put it i mean I, I always forget to put it on our own website it goes there automatically doesn't i think it? so it's not I me think so. <laughs> also you can find the hobgast book show on the on the facebook page now and that goes up automatically yeah, so yeah. it's pretty much everywhere um one thing we haven't done is it doing it in vision like so many other podcasts because then it, it kind of changes the dynamic. I mean, I'm a, I'm basically a radio guy. I've done a lot of telly, but um, that was my first passion. And I still think that there's something much more intimate about the conversations you can have mm. with the headphones on. And I do it in the pyjamas and it doesn't matter. Yeah, so. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes on a Sunday morning when we do the beginning and the end of the podcast, it's we're both sat in our pyjamas. Mm. So, yeah, please look it up. Um, <laughs> and if you can't find it, come back to us. But uh, it should be out there. Um, you know, it's 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 developed quite a, a decent following um, so far. We were, you know, we're really proud of it and we love making it. I'm just the the comments are like rolling in as we've done this. Yeah, they are. I'm trying to keep track of everything. Uh, Sam wanted to know what your roles in the business are. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's that a is one. a really good one. How are you going to answer that? All right. Well, okay. <laughs> at the very sort of, you know, if you're looking at it from the top level, um, I've all <laughs> someone described me last week as being one of those people who can come up with the ideas but not finish them. And I think that's really apt. Um, now, that was initially the sort of relationship we had, wasn't it, in, in terms of running the business? I've come up with, you know, initial mm. initial ideas. No, well, we could do it together. Yeah. But, okay, this is where we're going to start falling apart. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is pay you a, a reverse compliment, which is, is, <laughs> is Bex is really the engine room. I mean, she does so much of the, you know, the... the I mean, the, from the social stuff to the production, um, you really you drive a lot of that. And uh, you know, how would I describe mine? Mine's fitful. I mean, you know, you'll have bursts of energy. I'll have a good week mm. where I'm just doing tons, and you know, it's, um, and then I'll have a bad week. And that's always been my sort of Achilles heel, where I can't apply uh, myself as consistently as you do i mean you do ridiculous hours so you're up at seven uh you shut the laptop about 10 30 and in between all you've done is work or feed the kids and or driven them to school or whatever and, yeah. yeah so i suppose if you were looking at our specialisms your production knowledge is second to none um in terms of getting the books out yeah so, so i arrange all the editing and the proofreading and the cover and the, design and all that sort of production side <laughs> uh i look after um the amazon well, I mean, the audio, the audio, is, audio, is, audio is a massive job yeah, i couldn't yeah, do that yeah, so. and the podcast and um in between we're always looking for new angles as to what we can, can do i suppose i spend more time looking for new approaches that are going to take our books to somewhere uh to the level you know in terms of sales that we want mm. um you know and we need to do more of that but uh yeah i think in general it works pretty well uh but i would say that in terms of effort <laughs> <laughs> you're the you're the you're the queen of well, the business. i suppose one thing to say is, is it's quite difficult to switch off i mean i know i find it very difficult mm. sometimes it's oh, half it's 10 easy. at night and he's trying to sleep and i say well, have you seen the sales for today? And did you see that so-and-so sold more than so-and-so? And 
Mm. I need to, you know, learn how to switch off a bit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> is that the downside of working together as a as a team? Like, do you think that you can't switch it off? And I can't moan about my co director to anyone. <laughs> 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 no, I mean I know when you, you when you want to. Um, yeah, it is. It, it's so different from what we've experienced before. You know, when, I mean I was in a, a salaried job and and for for many years. I mean I never quite when I was working at the BBC you could never switch off totally. Uh, first, when I was a reporter, you were carrying a pager and so you were called out to stories whenever they felt like something needed covering. So. Um, when I was based in Brighton, I'd be at called out three times a week because Brighton was slap bang in the middle of the whole of the South Coast area that we covered. And so I'd have to go to Hastings one one night and then the next night I'd be over in Chichester or somewhere. Um, and so I never relaxed then. And when you're the boss, you know, if someone goes ill, phone call comes through to you at 12 o'clock at night. You've got to cover a night shift somehow. Um, so you never quite relax. But this is different. I mean, we can. I personally think, you know, I can leave it to some extent but there are too many nights where you know you're fretting over a launch <laughs> or how you're going to approach an author about what you want to feed back to them and saying no this is not quite you know where it needs to be and all that stuff it can really last and you know we often probably once a week each we have a bad night fretting about the business and we have in the past more than once haven't we from mm. three o'clock to five o'clock just sat there just and talked. talked about hopeck in the morning <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just try and, try and straighten but out. Often we solve problems at that mm. time of night, don't we? Yeah, and look, so. um, we're, we're, we won't hide it. I mean, we are, <laughs> we can be quite volatile with each other sometimes. You know, we're really passionate about this. And sometimes when we, when we don't feel we're on the same wavelength or something, then, then clashes just appear out of nowhere. This and is what this booth is for. Yeah, we kind of resolve <laughs> it pretty quickly, but they can be pretty. Yeah, you can, you know, we can, I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm holding my hand up here. I'm, I'm the one who's volatile, really. Um, you know, you know, it's not, it's not always smooth running, but, <laughs> you know, by and large, we're very proud of what we've achieved so far. And um, I think. Uh, yeah, and no, I love uh, it. Every day. I mean, work shouldn't be fun, but it is. Yeah, it is broadly fun. Yeah, most 90% <laughs> of the time. We've got, uh, we've got three minutes left so before i ask you to finish us off with a sort of a reminder about where everyone can buy the book sure. and your upcoming releases i'm just going to tell you some few more comments so sam has said that she's had a fascinating hour donna said she could listen to you two talk for another hour easily <laughs> thank you donna you probably will have to uh the next time we see you at a festival yeah <laughs> she says you're ace and um thank you <laughs> finishes off with it uh, reminder about yourselves, where people can buy the books from, and right. what's coming up soon that we should be buying. Sure. Okay. Everything. <laughs> Everything, hope back. <laughs> buy it all. Buy the most. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, first of all, the website is www.hobeck.net, and pretty much everything that you need to know about us and the books and the, the authors is all there and the audio books. Uh, in terms of what's coming up, well, what's just come out is Fair Game by R.D. Nixon, the second of the Clifford McKenzie series. So that came out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Check that out. It's brilliant. Uh, and check out the first one, Crossfire. Um, so in May, we have Little Averse's second book, Blood, um, Blood, Blood Lines. Blood Lines, following <laughs> um, up from Blood Notes. And then Harry Fisher. Yes. Yes, I killed her. Yes, I killed her. In May. Yeah. And then we've got more coming in the late May and in the summer. But um, Yeah, we've got a really uh, you know busy summer period it's it's phenomenal we've we're about you know about to announce a, an author who's going to be bringing out not one not two but even possibly four books in quick succession and a debut by jonathan peace as well which i can't recommend highly i'm just proofing He's it proofreading the it for me now it is him a job. <laughs> uh you know it's just come out of the edit it is sublime it's mm. really really good really powerful um set in 1987 in, in yorkshire um and all the sort of uh, what I love is the uh, the battles that the main character is having against sexism in the industry. And of course, we've got um, uh, we've signed Rob Gettins recently, Rachel Sargent as well. Um, mm. You know, we have got 
such an amazing stable of authors that have just joined us. And, and Ali Morgan's uh, third mm -hmm. book coming in the summer. Uh, Sue Shepherd's coming soon. I, I've got to get on and read it. Right. We can so those are the ones that are coming. And don't forget the Hobcast book show. It's every Monday morning. We, you know, as long as I get my finger out and get it edited, should be out about six in the morning. Uh, and check us out there. <laughs> and then all that's left for me to say is thanks for coming on. Oh, oh thank you. It's been fantastic. It's been a pleasure. Really yeah. It's, it. it's been lovely to have an hour where we smiled at each other. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>